Hey guys, so I wanted to make a beginner's guide for making a deck. And what we're going to do that with is Shaman. Um, so when, when I think making a deck, the, the, the very first thing I think of, um, you know, as far as beginners are concerned, we're not going to be focusing on, you know, um, trying to, to, to get real, real in depth about, you know, swapping out cards and stuff like that. We're really just focusing on how do we structure a deck going into standard uh, ranked mode, not wild, standard ranked mode. So that's what we're going to be looking at. And this is going to be sort of a beginner's guide, not, not any type of advanced stuff or anything like that. So just looking at the basics of constructing your own deck without following, you know, meta or any type of prerequisite, you know, for any type of deck in particular. So, um, with that being said, um, <laughs> it's funny because I said not following a prerequisite, but when, when you're making a deck for ranked standard, there's going to be a certain amount of cards in rotation, so you're going to have to use specific ones, obviously. Um, not your entire collection because you're going to have probably plenty of wild cards as well. So anyway, uh, moving into this, you just want to hit this custom deck function. Um, so... Making sure that we are, of course, selected this too. So if you didn't do that, click on go, you know, go back out, delete the thing, go back out, uh, select this from your list because you don't want wild, obviously, when you're making <laughs> a standard deck. So that's what we're doing here. Um, so we have to decide 30 or 40 cards. What we can do is we can start making our deck. Uh, because we have that new card that is a 40 card. It adds 40 cards to the whole thing. Uh, but normally we just want to focus on 30 cards. So we'll just start with that concept first. So when I first start making a deck, what I, what I think of is... Alright, first of all, this is a Shaman. Okay, so this is a really versatile class. This is a class that's going to have spells. It's going to have, it's going to have decent minions and... Um, just a pretty versatile class it, you can do it lots of different things with it uh, and that's all I'm gonna say like I said this is just a beginner's guide so uh, moving on from that one of the first things I do is I think about what's the newest mechanic that we have for the current expansion and that is infuse right there you see it right there in, in front of your face but what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna type it in <clears throat> So we're gonna see what we have as far as how many infused cards we have for our class already on hand. Uh, we could hit this button and see if there's anything we're missing, but it doesn't look like there is. That's gonna show us what there would be left for crafting. So, you know, just for, for point of reference, you can do that too for just really anything. You can hit that and see what you have left to get. Uh, but anyway, moving on. Um, we want to just type infuse uh, into that bottom bar there and just sort of look at all that we have available as well as our neutral cards. Always consider your neutral cards. Don't, don't rule them out when making a deck. You're going to use a fair amount of them probably. Um, so what I'd like to do um, is maybe utilize a, an infuse mechanic in this deck too since that's one of the new things. It's probably a good idea to try to use one of the new mechanic uh, one of the new mechanics that was introduced in the current expansion uh, when you're making the deck because then you're gonna be able to keep up with things. If you're not using any new mechanic that was um, just introduced, they're going to have a leg up. Everybody that's playing is going to have a leg up on you in the standard run because you're just not you're just not using a mechanic that um, you know it it has been thrown in the game recently. So it's it's not going to be good for you. Uh, you probably won't last too much uh, too very very long if you aren't using. Um, you know, those current mechanics that were just added. So, with that being said, let's add um, some infused cards. Now, this brings me to my next thing. With uh, Shaman, um, something to consider is the hero power. 
uh, when making a deck in general. Something that is to consider is the hero power too. So with the hero power with shaman, we have a totem. Uh, you know, with uh, just like with um, paladin and. Um, no, pretty much just paladin and shaman. We we get minions uh, that are summoned. You know, with with paladin we get the one one um, recruit. But with with shaman we actually get a, a random totem. So uh, we have that totem mechanic and the infuse. It's probably fair to say that we should use some type of totem mechanic or at least try it. So that's what I'm gonna do. That's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna uh, throw the party favor totems in here. Um, since we have this, I'm going to throw this in here, but I also want to be reading things and sort of paying attention to what this stuff does as I'm adding it to my deck. So I can sort of learn what's going to happen <laughs> with this stuff as things play out uh, and sort of learn my deck as I'm making it. So, <clears throat> transform a friendly minion into one that costs two more. Infuse four, transform all friendly minions instead. So infuse um, is that that mechanic that happens when, just as it says here, you can always hover over the card and it'll tell it should tell you what it does. Um, infuse is that mechanic when after so many of your minions die, um, you know however many you you get one taken away from whatever that number is so uh then you once you finish that you then get this so if you do four minions die you then get this transform all friendly minions instead uh, uh so that's that's pretty cool this one's only infused too so we want to want to probably use that um that's going to be sort of the thing i'm just telling you right off the bat that's going to be sort of the thing that's going to be maybe a last resort or maybe like you're about to win anyway and you just want to have fun with it so you but it's the sort of thing where if you do that you have to realize that's transforming all of your minions so now if you have like a totem mechanic or something else like murloc um you have now possibly transformed all of your minions not into totems or not into murlocs. Uh, so you have to consider what you have in your deck and, and all that. Uh, Elemental is one that you have to watch with that too. Um, but anyway, moving on. Uh, so that's, that's also something I was going to say is if you start to see murlocs, shaman's a really good one uh, to use with murlocs. You have lots of class-specific murlocs. So we're going to talk a little bit about that too. Um, but with that being said, let's add some of these infu infused cards and then I'll talk more about um, class specific cards um, right after this. So let's add a couple of these. Um, we also want to be looking at mana costs too. So now as we're, we're adding these, we only have um, four added so far, as you can see. Um, we want to be looking at mana costs and making sure that we have a pretty well balanced deck and that we're not adding too many cards that are like, you know, seven, nine, six, five is really pushing it, but you want a really good base of cards that you can th do something with early on. If you don't have that, you're doing it wrong. I'm just telling you, you're doing it wrong. Flat out, you will not win. Um, you can do late game. You can win late game. That's not to say you can't win late game, but that should never, ever be your main goal. You should be trying to win as quick as possible. And honestly, like I, I realize that that sounds like... Um, you know, like, a, a, oh, that's just my way of playing, and that's probably true for the most part. But it's also a really good strategy to um, think in terms of if you if you pressure them to play cards, you know, to do something about the minions that you're playing or the spells you're playing or whatever it is that you're playing. If you pressure them to play cards, a lot of a lot of times they then can't do anything about the stuff that you then start playing a little bit later. You can set the game up in your favor. So that's why I, I like to say. Make sure you have a good base of stuff you can do early on in there that 
also can be defensive too. It's not necessarily offensive, but also defensive. You want to be able to just do a fair amount of stuff early on, not necessarily. Um, you know, you can have your your win condition. We're gonna get to win condition here in a minute. Uh, you can do win condition, you know, for late game or early game or mid game, but that's entirely um, up to you. And we're gonna get to that here in a minute. Moving on, let's add some of these infused cards. So remember, uh, four has to die. So since we already have like two of these that are four, and this one's also four, we want to like pay attention to this four, five, three. So we probably want to add lots of low cost minions um, for, to die, to set up to die, because a lot of these are going to take quite a few to die to actually be able to utilize. So I'm thinking we should go Murlocs next too. What the totem mechanic is going to give us a lot of um, low cost as well, but we don't have a lot of totems. Um, we really don't, as far as what cards that we have. Our totems are going to come from our hero power mostly. So we're going to have to do Murlocs mainly. Um, let's just keep going though. Let's add some of these uh, infused cards here. Um, this is actually really awesome that they have the taunt. So let's, let's do that too. Um, I like that. We'll, we'll add that. Let's add one of those. Now, this is cool. I actually just got this card. Infuse. Gain stats equal to the attack of the minions that infused this. That's pretty cool. So, we're going to throw that in there. Um, I'm not going to do too crazy, guys. Uh, now... He, the reason why this card is so good, and this card is really upsetting a lot of people right now because it is so o OP. Um, so yeah, it has life steal. So not only is it going to heal you for all of this damage it's going to do, but you can endlessly do this, and it only takes once. So like one minion dies, and you get that. Deal one more, and uh, so then it's uh, six, and then you heal for that much too. And it's uh, amongst uh, damaged amongst enemies, just period. Um, I think they're going to nerf that at some point, so we want to take advantage of this <laughs> while we can. Use this card while you can, guys. So anyway, um, that covers that. Let's get rid of this infuse. Hit enter. What we want to start doing, too is focusing on control a little bit and what i mean by that what i mean by control is let's say um you know they play minions which they're gonna you know th they do stuff you want to control what's going on you want to also then control the board too so um you want to make some stuff happen you want spells you want locations um things like that um, so we want to take a look around and see, you know, sort of plan ahead what's going to be useful with this deck. Um, here's some of the totems. So let, may as well add those too. Um, we have a weapon here that has a totem mechanic. After you hero attack, summon a random basic totem. So that's actually a really quick way to get a random totem. And we ha can attack three times with this. That's just going right in there. Like, there's no reason not to use it. And the idea is that we're going to try this. Like, we're going to sit here and we're going to try this after we make it. So don't worry. You guys can see how, how it all works out. Um, now, also realize that as we start adding these, we might subtract as we want to add some more later, too. So I'm just sort of double adding just in case. And for some of these that didn't seem like they would necessarily be things that would go in a shaman deck necessarily i only added one so it, it, if like you know we're playing and i decide i really like this then maybe we'll go back and we'll add another one or if it i don't like it then we'll take it out so that's sort of my ideas is as i do this um if i want to sort of try something it doesn't seem like it fits the deck like this one absolutely we're going to do murlocs right so that would fit that that would absolutely fit but like some of these i'm not 100 percent so we're, we're going to find out. Like this one, I'm not 100% that that's going to fit what we're going to do. Um, but, you know, it, it's in there. We're going to try it. Um, moving on. Uh, Murloc. So, actually, you know what? Before we do Murloc, let's do... Um, 
We can do spell this way. Believe it or not, guys, you can actually do this. You can type spell. Uh, realize that's going to also search anything that says spell in the description, but it'll bring up all your spells, too. So we can do it that way. Um, I'm thinking a, probably a good idea <clears throat> is to go buy a luminescence, but just put one. Because we have lots of minions, this seems like a minion deck and a quick minion deck. So since this gives plus da uh, spell damage to all minions, and we have a pretty quick minion deck, um, it's fair to say that we could get some pretty serious damage if we do that. Um, there we go. Let's go Lightning Storm. Lightning Storm is an excellent, excellent uh, spell. It's only three mana. Now realize this overload mechanic is going to lock two of those uh, mana crystals if, if you use it. But, uh, you know, big deal. That's only for one turn. Three damage to all any minions. Um, so, yeah, it, it's a really good card. This one's really good for, for Shaman. It's just one of those cards that if you make a Shaman deck, you probably want that in there. Um, in fact, you know what? I'm just going to throw two in. Um, this is a really good card that I'd highly recommend um, just using. It's it, it puts three, four minions that freeze other minions. Uh, that frees other targets when they attack it um, every three turns. Um, so that's actually just a good a good one to have. We might want to consider Bloodlust because uh, once again it's a minion deck, so we're getting that buff from that. But once again, we're we're thinking um, spells and control at this point. Um, so we just sort of want to think. All right, well, what do we what what can we do as far as? Um, more damage spells so i think i actually like this i like the idea of the scalding geyser because now you guys what i can do is i can put him in here this is sort of what i was going to talk about at some point if you have a card that you know you want in the deck like you have like one of those favorite cards that you just sort of want to put in the deck you know, when you're about halfway through, you're getting near the end, it's a really good time to sort of plan that out. You might have a little little bit of leeway left where you can sort of plan this out. Now, th this one isn't too bad, right? Because this one's just going to add Colossal Minions to the bottom of your deck, and we sort of already planned that. This dredge ability will pull minions from the bottom of your deck. So that's that's already taken care of. We can add that straight to our deck, and that adds uh, three colossal minions right to the bottom of your uh, your deck. Then you'll use these, and you get to pick one to um, to put on the top. So yeah, that'll be a really good one. Plus, we get damage out of that. Now also. I think we should try the muck pulls. But I'm 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 not committed to putting two. I just want to try one for now. Cuz I haven't really used them a whole lot to be honest. So, you know, it, that's that's another thing I I I think it's fair to mention is, you know, when you're not sure about something and you want to try it, don't be afraid to just throw it in there if it seems like it could fit. Because, you know, transform a minion into a, one that costs one more, and that's fine, but we have some pretty low-cost minions here, so doing that, I just don't know how that'll stack up that well, but we can try it. Um, so that's why I, I only added one instead of two. So anyway... Um, once again, uh, we do have the weapon in here for damage as well. Um, so it might be fair to say that if we put this in here... Right? That we could get four attack. One of those turns. Um, here's a totem. So we could always throw a mana tide uh, totem in there uh, for card draw. So at the end of your turn, draw a card. So, you know, just thinking along those 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 same mechanics. Now, he, we wanted to add Murlocs, and we only have a few cards left. 
So at this point, it might be starting time to start thinking, okay, I probably only really want one of these, right? I mean, why would I really need two? We just really wanted some infused cards in here. We didn't really need that many. Um, I don't need two of those. Let's just try these out because I haven't really tried these yet. So I, I'm going to go down to one with this. So now we're starting to look a little bit better as far as adding murlocs. Um, we might go up to 40 though depending on what happens. We do have a few here though. So uh, what I like to do once again is type Murloc and that way we can get a sort of definitive look at what we have. And don't forget once again to skim through. Don't just stop with your, your class specific. When you're searching, don't forget to skim through your neutral um, to see what you have because sometimes you'll forget about stuff like that. You know what I mean? So Mutanus is a really good one to have. Um, this one's really good to have too because you can draw three, but let's just check these out first. So, well, War Leader, absolutely. When going Murloc, I think War Leader is always a fair bet because he's giving uh, the buff to all of them. This one's great because when you summon one, it gets rushed, plus it gets an attack. This one's usually good because it summons another one, but let's just look here. Sir Finley is actually a really good Murloc to have in your deck because if you have a situation where you have your Colossal Minions on the bottom, um, you can swap what your hand for the bottom, or if you just have a really bad hand, you can swap it for the bottom. So I think we should probably try Sir Finley for now. Now... This is another minion that's going to go in a lot of decks. Um, if you are a minion type deck person, and that's obviously what I am. We are making a very minion uh, oriented deck here. It's sort of obvious. Uh, nothing too complicated. Like I said, this is really just beginner deck. But once again, if you're making almost any deck, I would highly recommend using this card because... Um, discover a minion of the same type. I mean, come on, total more minion or more that. Nah, I can't spit the words out today, you guys. Totem or Murloc. <laughs> uh, totem or Murloc, you can uh, discover with this amalgam. So that's why uh, I, I say, you know, probably add that to most of your decks, if not all, um, if you are a minion type person. You know, I mean, some people just make a lot of spell decks, so obviously that's, that's not really going to matter a whole lot with that. Um, you can do this, too. Draw a Murloc. Um, what I like to do is I like to go Piranha Poacher because then that gets you that other mechanic of possibly getting the Piranhas in your hand, if that makes sense. You get those uh, those nice low-cost, one-cost minions, and you can buff them, too. Now, what I'd like to do is sort of just skim over this now that we're maxed out as far as cards on the deck. I like to sort of skim over and just see what I can maybe swap out and clean up what looks like it might cause me problems. Like, you know, I just sort of went through and just added the cards. Um, now I just want to look it over and just feel good about it. Um, I don't feel good about this one. I don't know why, I just really don't feel good about this one for some reason. Here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to add, um... Oh. It, hel it helps if I, uh... If I unsearch Murloc. Yeah, so, uh, I would like to... I keep clicking the wrong thing here. Where's he at? I always forget their names is is my problem. <laughs> so I I always I almost always remember mana cost. Yeah, there he is. So I would actually like to go 40 um, cards on this because we are going with uh, two types of minion mechanics here. Uh, actually, three type if you want to include beasts for the colossal minions. But 
we're gonna go with an extra 10 cards here. Nine, I should really say. Um, because he ca he counts as towards one. But anyway, um, <clears throat> 10 if you include him. But uh, anyway, what the reason I wanted to do that is because I started realizing I didn't even put these in here. And we have Totem Mechanic going, and I just think that would be a really good idea to include those. Those are such good minions. And if we do that, then we can add the... Where is it? There it is. These are great. So we have Murlocs, and they give more buff to Murlocs, but they also give a good buff to just all your minions in general. And it's pretty cheap. So, um, yeah, that'll be a really good one to have. Um, man, I keep clicking the wrong thing. Oh, right, this one. So this is what I wanted to say, is I saw this, and we have the dredge here, and that's a murloc. So I'm thinking that's probably a good idea. We want as much dredge as possible. Um, so at this point, what I'll probably go ahead and do is swap, you know, like something out here that just seems like I don't necessarily need two of it. Oh, no, wait, we still have five left. So let's just do two of those. And, um, we could add Glug now that we have the ability, but I want to add Rukan because he is such an excellent card to have in your Shaman deck. And right now, if you're running almost anything, you want to have these hero cards in there. Um, like, like I was, I've been running my uh, mage deck, and I just don't have, I still don't have this hero card for the mage. And it's it, it's not very good to not have that right now because when it gets late game, that's gonna what be what matters. Uh, they're gonna get their hero card, and you're not, and it's just you're just. It's going to be the end of it. So anyway, we also have the, the big boy totem here. Um, so we have Gigantotem. Uh, costs one less for each totem you've summoned this game. Most of the time, he's really cheap. We want to add him to the deck for sure. So I think we're doing pretty good. I think this looks pretty good. This is pretty well balanced. Um, now, I wanted to talk about win condition. Now, your win condition, um, for beginners, don't try to think too much about combos. If I do this, this, and this, um, pay attention to them when they happen. I think that's the best thing that you can do. Pay attention to them when they happen. But I, I think getting yourself frustrated over trying to understand how to use those early on uh, when you haven't been around long enough to, you know what I mean, learn all of the cards in the past and how they work with each other. It's just, we, we've all been around and seen all those those combos a million times and and you just you, you have to just sort of play enough to see it and see it happen and go oh that's how that works because there's going to be times where you think something works a certain way and it doesn't and you get really mad and it's going to happen I promise you it'll happen so um just um try try not to focus too or you know too much on combos early on that's a really good card um, and you know really um, just focus on building a well-balanced deck that you feel like you can just get stuff out if you're getting stuff out on the board that's the most important thing all you have to do after that is adjust your deck according to how you're losing so if you're making stuff happen, if you're killing minions, you're casting spells, you're getting minions out on the board, you are still making things happen, but you're still losing, you've made a pretty well-balanced deck, but it's fair to say that you're just playing against really good players that, that know what they're doing, and they've uh, they finally tuned their decks too. So just, um, you know, tune it to how you're losing. You know, you, you see um, that you're getting... Um, 
let's say you, you run this deck and you have all these minions out, but then you you hit a mech mage and they just AoE like nobody's business, all of your minions, all of the time. Um, what you might want to do is try to, you know, figure out a way to get some AoE yourself or get some more, um, you know, with Shaman, there's not a whole lot you can do about that. But, you know, what you'd want to try to do is get some silence. Uh, ultimately, if you could silence things like a mass silence or something like that, or get some spells, like discover some spells, that would be great. That could help you. Um, things like that. You know, or, or tra there you go, transform enemy. That's what I was looking for. Transform enemy minions. So things like that would actually be really, really helpful as far as control and stuff like that um, when that happens. So um, that's just one example of how you would adjust your deck. So if that's happening to you a lot, throw that in there or something like that where you can, you know, just wait until they play a bunch of minions. You know, it looks like they're going to, you know, they're just playing all that stuff and then you play that and they get they it gets rid of all their stuff and they got like two cards left in their hand, you know. So anyway... Uh, that's our deck that we made, and I think it's pretty well balanced. Um, now we wanna, we wanna, I just usually, name it whatever you want. I usually just name it something that I can remember. Um, so for this one, um... Totem Infuse. Oh, we got Murloc in there too, but it doesn't, I don't, I'll remember that. Um, it's the sort of thing where as long as you remember it, you're fine. <laughs> um, and I, I'm just, once again, I'm just sort of looking over this one last time. I think this is actually pretty decent. So now if it seems like you have a pretty well-balanced deck, what we're going to do is um, play it. And we're going to talk just a little bit about playing the deck as well as um, just, you know, like what you should do uh, from a beginner standpoint. So I, I haven't, I stopped. I uh, saw myself winning with some of the new decks that I was making. Uh, don't worry, we're going to get to them. And uh, <laughs> not in this video, but we're going to get to them. Don't worry. Um, and I, I wanted to stop because I wanted to make this video. So uh, as far as beginners, you're going to be at the bottom of the, um, the standard, um, the ranked ladder. So as, as far as the... Um, sorry, it, I had to pause it for a second. As far as the... Um, Rank, the the ranked ladder is concerned. The standard ranked ladder. Let's um, get that up here. Um, you know, for you for you beginners who who really don't know this too well and all that, there it is. So the the standard ranked ladder. Um, you know, we start in the the top right corner there. So if you're looking at the top right corner, that's right here. You're starting at, at bronze one and you're moving this way and then you reset back here at silver one over here and then you move this way again and and so you know so on and so on until you get the legend way down here so for those of you who didn't know that that's how it works um you know you get a, a star based on your wins uh you get your bonus stars then too um for consecutive i think it's three consecutive wins i believe um could be two and then, uh, and then you get your bonus stars, then, which which are then times two um, stars um, plus your your normal one star you get for winning. So it's basically three. So yeah, uh, if you win those two consecutive in a row, you get those three stars. Uh, otherwise, you just get the one. Uh, and then you you fill this up, and then you ascend. You know, obviously to the next one. So that's how the ranked ladder works. So basically, we want to go through and play with this new deck and try to win a little bit and, and just sort of talk a little bit about, you know, a beginner um, playing, playing Hearthstone. Playing Hearthstone in the actual standard ranked ladder. 
Um, because I have a feeling there's quite a lot of people that, that want to, you know, play this, but they're just really frustrated at how to start. You know, because honestly, yeah, how do you how do you start this game when, like, there's been so many cards and so many expansions and, and uh... Yeah, there is a certain set of cards in each standard um, set, and then they rotate out. But there's still a good bit of knowledge there Margo, that you're going to miss out on uh, that an experienced player will have over you. So, um, we get the coin. Which is good because um, we have so uh, you know that because you have four cards that means you get the coin so um, we really don't want ten cost cards but this one's infused when stuff dies it gets the infused so that we do want so actually we will keep that that's like one of the only ten costs I'll probably keep on my first hand we're gonna swap the seven. We're gonna we're gonna swap this because we want better cards. Uh, normally I wouldn't swap a four, but since we're keeping the ten, I'm gonna try to get something better. Not a very good start. Hopefully ah, we I can get something a little bit better going. I see you brought guests. So that card that we put in that gave us the um, the forty cards in our deck that allowed us the 40 cards in our deck that also increases our health to 40 so um that's something to also take note of um if you're if you're not using it it's just sort of like everybody's gonna have 10 more health than you basically so anyway um let's play this out actually we're gonna use the coin so that we can get some totems down because that's that we have that totem mechanic in here. We have the Murloc mechanic. So let's play some totems to get, um, you know, some more totem mechanic going. Um, if we don't see too much as far as totems on this we round, step. Uh, what I'll do then you. is sort of try to maybe adjust things, swap out some Murlocs for for maybe a couple more totems. Maybe throw in. Um, we only have one mana tide totem, so maybe another mana tide or something like that. Um, either way, I think it would be good to try to add to that totem mechanic. Another nine cost. It's not looking good, so maybe I should swap that out. I probably should have. Um, but let's go ahead with the totem, and we'll keep going. Um, because the idea is we can't really do anything anyway, and um, this turn. This, t this next turn, I could play this, but what I would like to do is I would like actually two minions to die so that that way it gets the infuse. But I don't want that to happen with too much sacrifice, which is actually why we have the Murlocs in here, which is why we wanted, you know, some actually cheap Murlocs, so that way we could play those uh, and have those get killed. Um, but right now what we're going to do is we're going to have the totems get killed instead. So we're going to play some more totems, try to have them get killed, that's perfect, that's going to give us attack, and um, so that'll um, help things to get killed more, more likely anyway, because it'll give other minions attack, so it'll force him to attack them, basically. Okay, so um, what I'm thinking now is... As far as this game is going, I can almost guarantee you I will not win this this particular match. Just as far as things are going now. Um, so, you know, what not a lot of people like to do is at this point they like to just concede. If you feel like conceding at this point and just re re and go ahead, I like to give it my all and hope just hope I get something really good and just hope I make a comeback. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. We need just need one more to die for the infuse. Um, we could get this too. We have 39 health. It, it, it is possible that we could make something happen. Uh, but that's, once again, that's what the infuse is for. The infuse is specifically for, uh, having lots of minions die. So this could actually be a really 
the thing that he's choosing to kill my minions. Because uh, if you'll see, I'm getting all this infuse right now stacked in my hand. So this is really, really good. What will wet your whistle? This works really good for the for the people that like to, to control the board. Um, they don't want you to have anything. The infuse is going to work really good. So m might end up working in our favor, um, but it might not. We we Like I said, we don't have a whole lot going on. We haven't drawn any of our spells, really. Uh, which could mean we need more. But we did put two lightning storms in here, so we just haven't drawn them. Uh, we, if we get Brakan, we'll have his AoE too. We do have him, but if we get there in, in time, uh, is what I mean, uh, before the match ends. So we have one more for the infuse there, but we could still play it and draw a card. That's what I think I should do. You know what? Don't hold on to things just for an infuse or something like that. Because, like, this one, this one's already infused, so we're going to play it. But if, if you're seeing that it's, it's getting to the point where they have all these minions on the board and you're just waiting to for this ability to happen I really feel like it's a good strategy to just say screw it play the card just play what you have and put it on the board for damage next turn force him to do something cuz guess what we got a card we got a handful of cards and even if we didn't you gotta make something happen you can't just sit here and hold on the cards uh, as one of those one of those you know basic concepts um, is just don't hold on to cards don't sit here and hold on to your cards don't end your turn with too much mana don't do nothing and if, and if you are doing that it's fair to say that you have a pretty unbalanced deck right? or you know you just got really happy with your draws but a lot of times you want to address the uh, the balancing of your deck if that's the case So at this point, I want to give this some thought because I, I can do I can do a whole lot here. Uh, I have six mana. There's a whole bunch of stuff I can do. If I just play this, consider the fact that he has the means to kill it immediately. <laughs> consider that. So what I think we should do is I think I should continue with totems. And get get some of these three fours down because that's going to get me a leg up. I think um, it's going to get minions out there that are really hard for him to kill for for um, for health, and it's going to they're going to be able to freeze. Um, and so if I also put a totem down, which I just did, basically um, I can continue that same totem mechanic of forcing him to kill that. Uh, increasing, you know, the infuse here. I'm already up to 11 on this, and it starts at 5. <laughs> so, you know, just gaining those infuse. This is already infused. Devour an enemy minion and its neighbors to gain their stats. So, maybe this is going to be awesome when we finally can play it. So, it's actually probably a good idea that we went with uh, the 40 health. Um, because, you know, we, we can, we can um, survive late game with the 40 health. This game, oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, this deck, um, as far as our win condition. Now, when I say win condition, we wanted to talk about win condition. It's really hard to talk about win condition without showing you win condition. So right now, this guy's win condition is just <clears throat> block me from doing damage while also doing as much damage as he possibly can, as quick as possible. That's what his win condition currently is. Um, it's just... Win condition changes every game, 
but it also is um, something that you throw into your deck as you make it. You, you decide your win condition. So I have a win condition here. Brukan is an easy win condition because he can he can summon taunts. He can do six damage to the hero, which you know if I get a bunch of taunts out and start doing damage, and yeah, I mean it's pretty quick. Um, so Brukan with you know minions on the board, he's a win condition. Um, so trying to get him out pretty quick, you know that that's something to consider. Um, it's not a real strong one, so you know, combining that with a secondary, some some sort of secondary win condition strengthens that win condition. Um, so we want to. The time has come to dethrone our former master. We want to just make stuff happen now. So I'm just going to get that down, increase the attack. That was really lucky getting the taunt. Um, I was only just sort of hoping I'd get that. Um, but then we were able to put the flame tongue down, which gets the attack on there. So if he attacks it, that's what it so That was just really lucky. That was my thought behind that. Um, but anyway, um, a secondary win condition to Burkhan now then would be you know, getting as many totems out as possible, and then buffing them with that, um... Well, the totems is the second one. The second, and then the third win condition would be buffing on top of that. That would be overkill, and nothing can stop us. So if we, if we had Brukan, we had a tot, we had a board full of totems, and we had this. You know, those are like essentially your stacking win conditions on top of each other. It's it's essentially one giant win condition, but you know, the the three on top of each other is sort of like the one one turn kill versus uh, you know taking the several turns to to um, execute the win condition. So anyway, um, I think it's fair to say that. Um, <laughs> I think it's fair to say that we should get Brukan out. So let's do this. Um, two damage to all enemies. So that's not good. Um, I would really like to transform his minions into other gear. I think I might throw that, that spell that we saw in here. That one that we talked about. I might, uh, I might throw that spell that we talked about into this deck. This is exactly that um, scenario I actually um, told you guys about, where he's sort of just controlling the whole board. He's not letting me have anything. He's not doing it with spells. He's just flat out doing it with minions. Uh, he's just controlling that board. I mean, I, some of it's spells to a point, but it's it's really just. This this guy's got a really good deck. He knows what he's doing. He's done probably done this a million times with this deck. So we if we had that spell that would transform enemy minions into uh, you know ones that cost one less or I think it was one less. It might have been even one more for all I know. Uh, I think it was one less though. Um, then you know that that dragon's gone. He doesn't have that anymore. So, that, but that dragon's really, really devastating. So, um, if we last two turns, we have Denafrius, but I don't know that we will. So that was really lucky to get the um, the taunts. There we go. We can use this. Here we go. Here we go. So we're going to devour this. This card is phenomenal. So I actually really like that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's okay. But that tells us definitively we should put another one in here. These cards are good. These cards are good. We should put another one in. We're gonna figure out how to swap out for Looks another like one because they're really, really good. 
Reporting for duty. Honestly, that's my really... I think that's my first experience. As far as using it myself. I've certainly seen them. <clears throat> so we have an option here. We have an option here. Um, we can 10 damage, oh, 21 damage, and heal. Or we can lightning storm, and we can do a bunch of other stuff. I think that we shouldn't sit on it. I think it's time to use it. A toast to all who sought to kill me. So there we go. We sucked all of that damage out of him. Now we have a 10-10, we got rid of all of his minions, and we have lifesteal. And that's just it. If it's at 21, it's been sitting in your hand all game. That's why we held on to it. That's why that's the 110 cost I hold on to. Because we were able to do all of that with one card. So uh, it, this really is another... That's another win condition right there. So the, the that's a, the fourth one that we have. So... It's fair to say that we have quite a number. Uh, that other one's one. Uh, that card itself is a win condition, too. So um, it's fair to say that the Infuse is working very well. Um, we should probably add another one. <clears throat> Suddenly we're coming back, you know. Uh, he didn't want to use that. You could tell he really did not want to use that and waste that spell on that. Um, but he had to. So, uh, let's do this. Um, let's see what we can get here. We still haven't gotten any Murlocs, which is crazy. Alright, let's do this. Alright, let's grab that. Uh, we're gonna go with that. Use Totem, since we haven't used it yet. Um, I'm gonna play it, but I'm not gonna do anything with it yet. I'm coming, I'm coming. I am Raven Get down! That's fine. I am eternal. That's fine. So yeah, there's our two totems from, and that's 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 the infuse ability that did that. So if you guys remember, this card starts off like this, and then ends up like this, and so that's how that infuse ability works. So if you remember, that was why we wanted that new and infuse mechanic in the deck, uh, because the idea is if we use that, we have that leg up. If we hadn't been using this man, this guy would have killed us already. I I'm sure you can tell. Now, he's probably going to anyway, because that's ridiculous. I don't know how I'm going to do, deal with that. Um, but we're going to try. Um, so let's do this. Alright, we got a, we got a taunt. That's, that's really, really good. That actually helps a lot. Let's play this. And... Um, we want to infuse that first. So let's just do the six damage. Hopefully he can't. So that's that hero power. So you want to be paying attention. If you use Brukan, um, you want to always be paying attention to your hero power. Every turn, look at that. Don't do anything else. Look at what you have here. Um, because, you know, you want to be paying attention to what that's going to help you with on the board. As well as, you know, if you can do that six damage if they got... 5 health or even 6 health, you've got that 6 damage, doesn't matter what happens next, you've won because you can just click your hero power. So you always want to be looking at that. With every step, the light guides you.
And this is uh, going a little bit longer than, than I had wanted it to, this game. But as you can see, it seems like we made a pretty decent deck. Because th this guy is now. playing a lot of really epic stuff. And we are just having lots of answers for it and, and all that. So I, I think probably one of, the, one of the things I want to put in here is that spell I mentioned, maybe. But I, I, want, I want another one of those, um, those nine cost... Um, Infuse minion that devours the uh, the enemy, and I also want I think I want a hex in here. I just want a hex in here because there's too many times where like he has like a giant minion and there's like nothing I can do about it. If I have hex, it's just gone. It becomes like what is that, a zero one frog or something like that, zero two frog, something like that. If so only yeah, I had some would like to soup. um probably put that in here. So the Bioluminescence would help too, if we had that. Remember, we could cast that on our minions, and then we could use this, and then that would be a lot of AoE spells, uh, damage, I should say, as well. Uh, mm. But we need the Infused for the, um, the plus two, plus two, and we don't have it. So we can still get the Taunt, which is probably what I'll do, just to buy us some time. Uh, let's get Piranha Poster down too, though. Come to our AoE. We're gonna hold on to this for now. Make sure he doesn't play anything else. Um, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and use that, and just, just you know, hope for the best. Uh, the idea is that you know, using that, it's going to buff my minions more and make them harder to kill. So hopefully, he doesn't have any like, you know, crazy mass silent spells that he got from something. <laughs> Which would be great, you know, if we had uh, some sort of mass sounds, but we really don't. So, um, this is where, you know, as a beginner too, you want to pay attention to the to the people that you're playing against. If you see a deck that you like, you know, that's the sort of thing where it's like maybe you want to play as that class instead. But, um, you know, if you're really, really struggling with a certain class, you're really struggling on um, winning games or something like that. I would just switch classes, honestly. I would just try a different class, um, which is exactly what you guys saw me do on the channel. Um, you know, we we struggled. Um, I had my Piranha Shaman through Altrak Valley and Sunken City, and it was doing great. Um, and then we tried to bring it into um, Nathria, Castle Nathria, and um, you know, it, it was doing pretty well. At first, but then it was just like nah, you know. And then and then after that, I was like, well, I'm just not gonna, I'm not gonna waste my time on shaman if if you know it's this hard to do something with shaman. So you know, I made the mech mage, and mm. sure enough, I started winning games left and right. So we have the bioluminescence now. We could use it. Um, I think it's probably our safest bet. Let's see what we get with it. Um, what I'd like to do though is just play some minions because then we get the added bonus of that But we don't want to max out our mana before using it So let's just pay attention I think we're okay Yeah, we're fine So we get to get seven out of it I'm coming, I'm coming We're gonna leave that um, because I think I want that that totem there because that anchor totem gives um, buff to one class minions and I have piranhas now so oh <laughs> until now right there's a service bell that's a really really good card that's a really good card that new card it's called service bell I think. Discover a class card from your deck and draw all copies of it. That's a Reporting really, really good card. 
really good. Looks like I'm here just in time. So, okay. What what I'm thinking is what you know. Don't forget, you know, when you have stuff like this, you know, to hold on to that because if you play that, he's just gonna kill it. But then if you draw a Murloc later, it could actually help you. So just playing minions like this and putting them out late in the game really wouldn't serve you a whole lot of purpose. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just do my hero power for now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to play my uh, Piranha. It's going to get the buff. Watch this. There, it's going to get the buff. And um, we're going to actually kill this. So that's Rush. And then we're going to actually transform I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm trying to read the card and the stupid thing. <laughs> okay, yeah. That's cool. Uh, it doesn't really matter now. It doesn't really matter for us. But it's, I hate that when you when you try to hover over a card to read it and just right it was you hover over it, the, the, the stupid chat bubble pops up like twice in a row. So there it is. He's using up all he has now. And that's exactly why you don't play everything. That's what I'm talking about, you guys. That is a perfect example. I'm actually glad he did that. That's a perfect example of why you don't just play everything in your hand. Um, so we're going to do this. Minions are gone. We're gonna go ahead and heal. And once again, not playing that minion because he probably can just kill it. We want to wait and see if we can get a Murloc. Um, if we can't, yeah, we're gonna use it eventually. But um, it's looking pretty grim anyway. He's got four, five cards, and we got two. Hopefully, we can make something happen. Just got really unlucky with our draws. We hardly drew any Murlocs, and we have to. We didn't even draw the amalgam. <laughs> we we drew the um, the infused murloc toward the beginning there, but that's just it. You know, we the the life steal and everything. You want to draw that later. So we 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 got pretty unlucky there. All right, so we have a we have a party totem, but we need minions to die. So we don't have any minions. So what I'll do is I'll wait one turn. Oh, There we go. We have the um, the taunts for our hero power. But we also will possibly draw a minion here, so and and we've we've lost already. But uh, the point is to sort of at this point just you know explain the uh, the strategy behind what I'm going to do to try not to lose the best I can, you know, to, to try to sort of just at least play this out. So here's our, here's, there he is. That's why we put him in here. Uh, would have been great to get him early on, you know, but we didn't. Um, so anyway, um, let's go ahead with our taunts. We're going to go ahead, big boy totem, and uh, we are going to leave him alone, actually, because we're going to get these killed anyway. Yeah, I'm not going to transform one of those, because they're actually really good minions. Um, a two-cost minion, a two-three, that's a two-cost, you're going to transform that into something that's probably not any, any better than the taunt. And there it is. You failed. And there it is. So 
So yeah, if we if we had that mass transform, that would help a lot. Um, but yeah, we're gonna play the we're gonna play this. And we'll get the we'll get the, the rush. No, not that it'll matter, but you know you'll get the rush. So we, we have the taunt there, so that saved us like an extra turn. So that's kind of nice to get that. That was really, really lucky to get that, but it's not really going to matter. We just had one taunt in the, in the way. Yep, there we go. So I want that hex. We're going to put a hex in here. That's that's where we'll talk about um, what what the swap now. So you, you sold the basically it, it, it looked like a pretty easy, pretty um, um, pretty easy to play deck is what I should say. Pretty well balanced, easy to play deck. The problem is I just wasn't drawing any Murlocs. Uh, pretty much didn't draw any. Um, didn't even draw him. Um, and and just sort of. Um, got things in a really weird order not not in a way that was helpful at all so what we're gonna do is we're gonna like I said we're gonna swap some things out let's swap out a flame tongue and we're gonna swap that out for like I said uh, we want to put that other one in here the um, this one um, oh I only have one so that takes oh no no I have two I was looking at it wrong I don't I was looking at this for some reason so we're going to put another one of those in here, and we want Hex, because how many times, there it is, yeah, zero, one, how many times did I come across something, guys, we didn't even draw this, and there's two in here, so that's what I'm talking about, like, we didn't even draw this, and this would have gotten us plenty of totems, and we have two, so I think it's pretty good, um, we just got really unlucky with that first game. Um, what I'd like to do though um, is take something out, swap it out here. Let's swap out. Um, I'm going to swap out one of the Murlocs for one of these because we have two of these. Um, it's a four cost for a four cost. I think that's pretty fair. Um, I think that's really, really um, all I want to do. That's really all I want to do, I think. That's cool, but I don't know that I want to use that. Um, might might use it in an elemental deck or something, but yeah. Okay, so now we're going to try our, our deck out with the changes that we made. So let's go ahead and try this out with those um, new cards uh, that we added. So it should be... Um, and and you know that first game we played it, we uh, we lasted a pretty good amount of time for not, you know, drawing Margo what we needed sort of when we needed. It. Uh, we get a demon hunter. Rage hails before Could mine. be a tough match. Uh, demon hunters sort of have quick answers for things. For <laughs> okay, so we had a, a conceit. We'll just go ahead. And we got this, the bonus for that, so that works. We'll just go ahead and queue though. We want to try out the the new deck, you know, uh, with the changes that we made here. Okay, another demon demon hunter. Uh, no. Seems like uh, <laughs> a demon hunter kind of knight. I uh, I liked the first hand that we got better, but we will hopefully get lucky here and get some better draws. Ah, ah, I see you've brought ah, ah, I see you've brought guests. Let's just um, end the turn. We don't want to do this yet because the idea is that that's there for the Colossal Minions. If we draw that, um, 
Each scar. Ambassador card. Vanquished. So, you know, realize if you add, you know, another card, whether you like it or not, it should fit your deck. You know, that, that ambassador card, that fits our deck because we added those dredge cards to be able to draw them from the bottom if we needed to. So, you know, just realize if you, if you want to add a card like that that you like, try to make sure, you know, you fit another mechanic in there to make it, you know, work. Um... Otherwise, you know, you're just sort of slapping a random legendary in the deck. <clears throat> so we'll just do that anyway, um, because we gotta get rid of that minion. That's fine, we can take care of them with uh, Lightning Storm. Let's go ahead and well, I'll just go ahead and put my three four down. Because the thought is to set up for the totems, the anchor totems. So, and uh, your hero power counts as a one cost. Um, so you can use that for that one cost minion uh, trigger. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my um, lightning storm. Rather than take any more damage from that. <laughs> That's why we have that in there. But if you'll notice, we have this these overloaded now, and that's that mechanic that the shaman had. To do. That's gonna lock your mana, you know, for X amount. Uh, okay, so because it's a four-two, uh, you know, I have to consider. All right, if I play this, he could technically kill it because he can just attack it with his hero power and with that minion. So do I necessarily want to do that? Probably not. Probably not. I don't necessarily probably want to do that. I probably want to play a totem and wait till next turn. Wait till I have, you know, more of a basis for playing such a card. You don't want to, as I talked about in that last game, I don't necessarily want to just play my cards. And once again, for those of you still watching, you know, this is, of course, uh, a beginner's guide. So, you know, I'm just sort of explaining everything I'm doing. Lots of detail. <laughs> so anyway, um, it'd be great if we had the, the geyser uh, spell for the two damage, but we don't. Uh, so I'm thinking we should probably... I think we should probably use the Murloc with the Dredge. So something that will help us probably next turn. Not necessarily right now. Or next turn. Or something we could get actually, you know... So this could actually help us next turn. But I kind of want this in my hand at the same time. Let's go with muck pulls to play it safe. So we can we can use those uh, we can use the that location on the totems, um, and they'll work pretty well on the totems. Because you know, once again, um, it's transforming it into a minion that costs one more. So. Basically, by doing that, uh, you know, the idea is the higher the cost, the, the better the minion you do. You do or the more attack, or, you know. That sort of thing. A lot of time. So. Let's play the location. Yeah, I'm gonna go Piranha Poacher. Because I have the mana for it. Um, and then I'm gonna play this. <clears throat> so since that's a taunt, 
Uh, and that's sort of in a way from him attacking me. Now I'm gonna do it with Probably should have attacked first, but that's fine. Yeah, I should always attack first. That was my bad. So that's a good example of a time where it's not working out too well. Uh, you know, you get you get a you know, it costs one more, but you know, it's a random minion, so you really could get something that's a two cost one one. And you know, because that's a battle cry, it didn't didn't do anything. Because <laughs> we didn't trigger the battle cry. So yeah, um, now at this point, it would be really great if I could buff my minions. Like ultimately, that's what I'd like to do. I'd like to just play stuff, buff it, get it out, get the damage out there. But I can't. Uh, I don't have um, the nothing can stop us to to do the buff. Um, I might want to consider swapping one of them for blood uh, bloodlust. Um, you know, just to have one and one. Um, I'm sort of just thinking about that in the back of my head as I'm playing. You know, I'm always thinking, since I haven't, you know, like, I'm always thinking about, you know, like, what to do as I play, um, to sort of rebalance the deck. So, you know, just be aware of that, that that's something that you definitely want to do. Let's just play one of those for now. And then we'll play a Piranha. And then we'll use him to kill that minion, and we'll get another one now anyway. If you want to turn. So we have a good thing going, but the idea is he probably could have an AoE coming soon, which is an um, area of effect. Um, so, you know... It's going to do a spell or some type of uh, battle cry that's just going to do damage to all of the... For the whole board, basically. Um, is probably what's going to happen. Um, I know... Um, I know Demon Hunter has an ability for your or a spell to throw your weapon at all the enemies. So that's something, too. Um, that's something that, that, you know, basically, you know... Advanced players are always going to have a leg up one, and any type of beginner is, is that they're going to know a lot of the cards that could be thrown at them at any given time. So that's why I always say, and I've always kept saying throughout this whole video, you know, don't just play everything that you have. Hold on to your stuff. Try to be strategic about this. Alright, so let's attack, and then we'll transform them. Alright, there we go. It's much better. Let's get the dredge out here. Let's just try to get all this stuff out here as quick as possible. Uh, as much as I'd like that, let's go with the insane. There we go. Some of totem. So, um, this is, this was good. If you'll notice that, uh, the, the adjustment, um, we, we haven't drawn really any of the adjusted, uh, cards that we added in, but the point was that, you know, through that first match, I just decided I wanted to make those adjustments. It wasn't that I necessarily thought I needed to. I thought it was generally a good match, just that we didn't really get, you know, what we needed. And it's always good to sort of make that assessment at the end of the match instead of maybe just getting frustrated and ending the match really quick. Um, so we can just do this now. A toast to all who sought to kill me. Let's get cracking. So there we go, guys. Um, and it's fair to say that this is a. Uh, Pretty simple to use. Deck. Um, it's pretty easy to make. Um, it seems to be working pretty well so far. I don't know that I'll be able to take it too much into silver. Really hard to say at this point. Um, but as I would go into silver, you know, as I've always been saying throughout this video, 
you want to continue to make those adjustments as necessary and um, I think that pretty much covers it um, but I really appreciate you guys watching this and this um, I probably will do some more stuff like this you know as I come up with ideas um, and things like that maybe I'll I'll continue to update and do a different video and and um, and all that but um, for now I think that's all we have to really talk about as far as um, you know um, a, a guide to just making a deck um, in the most basic way possible so you know basically just a real quick summary um, when you make a deck you know just think about first of all obviously class that you want think about your class but then obviously after you're done deciding on the class that you want um, you know f first what what are the new mechanics for the current expansion you know look those up look up what they do um, and then type that in as you're making the deck and just start adding cards you know just like we did with infuse add those cards add those infuse cards um, add you know whatever those those new um, mechanics would be that you would want to use um, and um, and then you know go from there you know if you have a if a, you have a spell casting class you know maybe you want to go all spells maybe you want to do a mage and you want to go with the quest that that triggers after you cast so many spells so you therefore you can justify because that's a, a you know uh, that um, that win scenario that we talked about you can then justify making a whole deck with mostly spells a uh, hunter can do that too um, so there, there's just all kinds of things to consider when choosing a class and things like that um, but then as far as um, then the notice those next steps you know remember to then ch you know um, what are those new mechanics then choose the mechanics from that class whether you know with hunter you have those beast mechanics uh, with lots of buffing um, lots of duplicating where you're uh, buffing the menu duplicating it putting it back in your deck things like that uh, drawing cards discovering copies of cards from your deck um, that's hunter you know um, there's there's plenty of different things like that with other classes too there's lots of other mechanics so then that's your next step with the deck deciding what what you want to do um, after that and then, of course this is standard ranked um, deck making uh, we're talking about um, not wild because with wild of course then you have all of the cards so then it wouldn't really matter as far as the uh, the current expansion as much uh, but uh, you still would would consider that a little bit and then uh, and then of course you know whatever else you want to throw in that that's that's you that's your own personal touch like like I like to do um, or maybe you just want to go all you know like like maybe instead of murlocs we want all totem you know or something like that um, you, you can do that um, it's usually you don't want to usually you end up adding other stuff and all that anyway <laughs> but uh, that's that's what we talked about with uh, the trial and error with playing and stuff like that so um, anyway um, I hope this was a really useful guide for you guys and uh, you know if you have any questions feel free to leave some comments um, I will try to get back to you as quick as I can you know with um, um, with a good answer uh, but um, you know there's only so much I can communicate through a, a you know a comment on so um, I will do my best but anyway um, I really appreciate you guys watching and um, we should be back to sort of a normal live thing probably next week but um, you know I'll, I'll have an announcement on that probably the weekend we'll do an update a channel update and I'll try to announce everything to keep you guys updated on what's coming so anyway um, that was the beginner's guide uh, to making a deck in Hearthstone for standard ranked mode so thank you guys so much again for watching I really really appreciate it and uh, look forward to uh, forward to some new content here pretty soon <laughs>